Good morning everyone and welcome back to Craft Eccentricity and this morning we're going to do a Panelisa let's make that and this is what I'm going to be using today I've used a couple of things out of the honey pack which is an absolutely gorgeous pack and I've cut a little piece of this um, sort of like postal ephemera that you see here and I also cut out um, some of the baroque which is part of an envelope die set we're going to be using this stamp set today I want to use the word Merry Christmas and we're going to watercolor that bottle set and we're going to do it real quick and easy and also one piece of ephemera here out of the chipboard number set which is absolutely fabulous if you love junk journaling these are gorgeous there's like little bits of every number or specimen number you could ever need so i don't think it actually tells you how many uh pieces are in there it probably does but i haven't looked at it but there's got to be around 100 i would reckon so there's a lot in there right now the die that we're going to use is this one and it has all been cut apart because I've been trying to get organized and what I did was I've made the envelope and this is the flap of the envelope I'm going to show you that and also this is the base of the card which has a lovely scallop edge it is a slim line and then you get two inner dies which you can either keep connected or you can separate I've kept mine together because I do like to have a stitched edge and this is the one that sits on top of this lovely lacy scallop edge right so I'm just going to move those out of the way first and uh, show you what I've been up to just reaching over the other side of the desk right now then the envelope I have made the envelope now, I probably need to go that way around and I will give a measurement of this while I'm thinking about it so you can see this is where I've used that kind of baroque paper these are elements that come with the die this lovely uh, shape I haven't got a clue what you call that shape I'll let you tell me below and then just that piece of ephemera across there and you get this lovely layering piece and also within the die you get this um, slot so that you've got somewhere where you can you know poke your envelope back in if you want to so I actually cut that out anyway and then for the card piece that fits inside here and you can see it does indeed fit inside there there's lots of overhang so we've got the scallop base which is super pretty and then just a plain stitch top which I've cut in watercolour cardstock and I don't know about you, but my camera's looking all weirdly stripy at the moment. So I'm going to try and calm it down. Something's probably happening that it doesn't like. Might be the cold weather. Right, so that is the finished envelope. And I'm going to measure it. And all you do is cut two of the uh, large envelope panels, glue them together, and then just glue the flap on. Right, we are at eight and i'm gonna say five eighths of an inch gorgeous size and then let's have a look at that four and three eighths of an inch wide so that is how big that is it's absolutely gorgeous and don't forget with dies like this you can crop the flaps off and you can turn them into pages for a mini journal I'm trying to get some clarity. There you go. And there's that that lovely top. And you can see the stitching around the little um, pocket slip there that you can just tuck this in. And of course, if you're doing pages in a journal, uh, you can use the pocket slip for that and just pop your bookmarks or bits of ephemera into it. Right, so the envelope is complete. And this is the bit that we're going to be doing so first of all i want to color the base not the base sorry the top of my card everything's going to get stuck down onto that so i'm going to move that as well i've got my lovely little scruffy mat 
which I absolutely adore. This was from AliExpress. It's just a piece of silicone and it will get stained up if you use really sort of like bright, vivid stuff like pink or yellow. It kind of, I don't know, it just embeds into the silicone, but it doesn't come out or hurt anything. So I've got my cards there and I'm just reaching over here, trying to be organised. And I'm using three oxides, so I've chosen weathered wood, antique linen, and I've got bundled sage. So those are the colours that I'm going to use. And the first one I'm going to go down with is weathered wood. And I've got three blendy tools. Now, I know that one's my antique linen, and this one's my bundled sage. That's the paler one. And I do keep all of my foams colour-coded and... Uh, everything's written down and I keep them in plastic tubes and I've done a video I think of how I actually store them but it's a great way to do it now I have to turn this this way around can you see my fingers I don't know if anybody else has this problem but every time I get my oxide ink pads out I have to sort of like go over everything right excuse me while I just go and get some kitchen paper I didn't think this one was going to be that bad Right, so that was a quick attempt at a clean up and you can see that <laughs> I've got some of the darker stuff there on my brush and I don't know why it is but you know some pads seem to be worse than others and I do store them pad side up, they're not on their side or stored upside down. Right, so I imagine this is going to be quite dark because it was so sort of like inked up and, and juicy and yes it is, so seriously wet. So I'm just covering my entire piece with this and I reckon there's enough juice to do all of it. Can you see that? You can actually see the strokes in it, it's that wet. So I'm just going to sort of like drag that down and try and smooth it. And it's a shame really because weathered woods as you can see me going off in this corner here, it can be um, a really nice pale colour, but I'm going to work with the um, the error of the ink. <laughs> That's what I'm going to do. And I'm just going to keep using what I've got here. Just work that around. Another thing you find as well, that if you put your fingers in it, it will, it will leave your fingerprints. So I'm obviously going to be lighter one side of my card than the other, but that's okay. And you can also see the grain of the watercolour card stock. And uh, I've done that on purpose. If you use the reverse, it's smooth, of course. I'm just going to touch that. All right. And then because that might be, you know, a little bit darker than I originally wanted, I'm just going to run off and get a clean piece of kitchen paper. I'm going to dab it with uh, some water. I will be right back. I've just put my lid back on that before any more escapes. Right, so I've got a piece of kitchen paper that I used to... Uh, clean up with and I've got my squirty bottle this is just one of those cheap ones from Walmart and I am quite literally putting really big drips on here you can leave it for a few seconds and then just just go in and lift now obviously if you're using a fine mist bottle you're going to get finer blobs but having bigger blobs doesn't bother me because I am trying to lighten it quite a bit so here we go and it could be as well that I'm going to have to let this dry for a couple of minutes I don't mind using my heat tool it's just that I don't like the way it curls paper up right I think that might be sufficiently lightened for what I might need I'm just going to keep dabbing it Right, we are now a little bit more cheerful. Not much, just 
just a little bit. I want to try and tie my colour in with um, that paper that I chose on the envelope. Right, I'm going to let that dry and I will be right back. Okay, so I think that's sufficiently dry. Still a little bit of dampness, but not to worry. And the next colour that I want to go in with is Antique Linen, which is right down at the bottom. And this is my Antique Linen Dauber. Now, I don't want to overdo it, and I'm going to go all around the edges first before I start blending it in. So I hope that you can see that. And my camera's not playing up too much. So I'm just going down and making sure that I don't have too much on. I'm going quiet. It is really lovely to ink blend. Now you can see that has like totally changed the whole thing. But what I'm going to do again is I'm going to drip some water. And of course that's going to mean I'm going to vanish again for a while. Just big blobs. And then I've got the same scruffy piece of paper, why not? Not going to waste it. I'm going to dab that off. I'm going to let that dry and I will be right back. Right, so I think that's dry enough. And the next colour I'm going to go in with is the bundled sage. So I'm only going to pick up just a little of that as well going to drag that around the edge this is pretty close actually um, you'll see as I go down to antique linen which is kind of weird but you know sometimes I can put this down with antique linen and I can hardly uh, tell the difference but it is just something that's um, a little more subtle now, Amazon has just arrived, <laughs> which is really important because they bought all my hoops for my uh, my raised garden beds to stop them from freezing because it's coming and I hope everyone's ready for it. I was uh, commenting on here yesterday saying I've got my, my cow print combinations at the ready, honestly. I go charging around the uh, the house looking like Alma Fudd. All I need is a little pop gun. Right, now I've left, as you can see, quite a bit of blue in, in the middle and that's on purpose because I want to be able to colour those bottles in on that stamp and uh, for them to still sort of like have a, red, uh, a blue trueness to them. So I'm going to spritz this once again. I'm just dripping it down. I'm going all over it this time. I'm going to leave that just for a couple of seconds. Can you see that? It's kind of puddling around. And then I'm using the same scruffy cloth and I'm going to use it with the same ink on it. That doesn't really matter. And we're just going to lift again. I really like that. I know vintage isn't everyone's thing, but it's one of those things that if you've got some time and you want to be creative, there's all kinds of different and new things that you can learn um, using your inks. You don't just have to splash your ink with water. You can um, splash it with all kinds of things. And uh, I think one of the most interesting things I ever discovered was heating gesso uh, with embossing powder. If I remember rightly, because it was about 15 years ago when I did it, it all puffed up and went weird like snow, like puffy snow. So, you know, 
when you want to get stuck in and get a load of stuff out that you haven't used for ages, it can be quite fun. Right, so these are the mottled colours that I'm ended with. And you can just about see that there's like three shades there and then they've been made paler with some water. But I do need to let that dry before I can stamp on it. So I'll be right back. Right, so here it is all dry and there's a slight moistness but I think it's okay and I'm going to use my Distress Archival and this is something that I do um, when I can't be bothered to get my stamping platform out I just stick it down onto my silicone it's not going to go anywhere and uh, just put my ink on and if you find you've got a problem stamp it's a great way to do it as well so just make sure that you're getting plenty of ink on so that you get a good impression and I think I've just about got it covered there now of course this is one of those things that if you do not do it right um, then you've got to start all over again now I know that I want this quite close to the bottom and I'm looking at my halfway point so you know I'm quite happy to go down there and keep one hand on it while you rub. And then we'll find out what we've got when I lift it up. So there, there is our impression. Now I wanted it close to the bottom because I want to pop my sentiment up at the top. Now I'm not so smart with sentiment so I'm just going to grab the stamp set again and I just want the Merry Christmas so I'm just going to pull that off and I want it to fit in here and I want it to be central and I hope that that is and I'm using my Alina Craft stamp block I'm just moving that stamp over there and it should fit actually so you know I'm, I'm not confident at always being straight all the time I just know that if you've got a stamp that may be a problem I don't know if this one is or not because I hadn't used it before then just popping your project down on top of the stamp holding it with one hand and then rubbing um, you usually get a perfect impression Right now, I think I'll just move my paper a bit. I'm just going to stand up for this and I'm going to guesstimate. And as it's vintage, I'm not going to worry too much if it's straight or not. Right, I'm hoping I've got a good impression first time. There we go. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Right, the next thing that I want to do is use my Tombow watercolours and like I said before, the reason I kept it kind of bluey greyish right there in the middle is because your bottles are blue. Now, whether these are going to be darker than what's down there, I don't know. I'm about to find out. So let's go in and touch this bit up and see what a difference that makes. I think it does it makes just enough difference and I don't want to do the other bit on there because I'm pretty sure that that's the label and this is just straightforward colouring in and I can see that I've got some stars on this one so I'm just kind of tickling along and I want to look at that because I was wondering if that was a label and I think it is so I'll kind of stay out of that area but you can do things like this really really fast and then my labels I feel um, are going to be beige so all of my bottles have got that blue hint to them we'll go there as well not quite sure what the stripe area is going on behind so I'm not really going to touch that but you've only got to sort of like tickle your colours so the colour I'm using here is 942 um, and I'm going to use that on 
on my labels and hopefully make them look a little bit more beige than the rest of it. Now, of course, Tombow markers can be mixed with water. Absolutely. And I'm looking at this, and I don't think there's a label on that, but I'm pretty sure that that is a little label. And I'm pretty sure that this is too. So right, most things are held um, far away from me with this camera, and sometimes it can be quite difficult to see. So I think I've got all of my labels in there. And then I've got this mustard yellow because I wanted to do the stars. So that's something now that's adding a little bit of extra colour in here. Now, they're not kind of fully apparent, so I've only done that little bit. But I think I'm going to get um, a darker blue. Just hang on a second. All right, so I've got this one, and this one is fractionally darker than this one. This is a 291 that I used before, and this is a 451. So I'm just hoping that the um, colour difference is going to show one to the other. So all of these stripy bits, you can either consider them as um, light or shadow. That's entirely up to you. So I'm going to go in there and go a little bit darker. I'm doing that bit and I'm doing that bit. And then I think I'm going to go to the bottle tops. Do those a little bit darker. And go on the tops. And I have got my white gel pen as well. Now, uh, that bottle top, I'm more likely to um, do in a kind of brown shade or something. But I've got yellow on my desk, so I'm just wondering. No, I won't. I'll use this one. Yeah, that's better. That adds a nice little bit of contrast. I'm going to go around the edge of that one. And then you've got all kinds of little swags and snowflakes. And then there's teeny weeny. Um, I don't know if you can see them. I have got the camera dropped down quite a bit. There are little stars here. And you can just go along and sort of like find things and pick little bits and bobs out. I'm going to use the darker blue on the snowflake. And we've got little round bits coming off this. I've just spotted another star there. And that's the centre of that snowflake. And I've got a cog going on behind there. So, you know, if you've got the time to do it, you can uh, go in with all your metallics and stuff. Your metallic watercolours and have some fun. But I just want to pick these out in a slightly darker blue. And I'm just tickling right on the edges. Yeah. All right, I'm quite happy with that. I've got what looks like a little ribbon coming off that bottle. And I'm pretty sure that it's a ribbon tied around here. And if it's not, I'm going to make it so. So I've got a yellow ribbon there. I mean, you could add red into this as well if you wanted to. But I think I'm going to stick with what I've got. Yeah, so I'm kind of yellows and blues is what I have. Oh, and I forgot to do that little yellow star. It was kind of like little things like this that just catch your eye. Right, I'm going to put some foam tape on the back of this as soon as it's dry. And I'll come right back. Right, so before I do that, I've got my gel pen out here and I've decided there's some some little bits of uh, of white that I want to put in there. So I've already done the top of that because I was kind of like looking at it as I went along. 
and I'm going to use these as my points of light so I'm just going to go along here and I'm going quiet because I enjoy this process <laughs> a little bit of light in there a little bit of light there and I think we'll have that as a point of light and then what else have we got I've got this bit this bit got that bit and that's bow blessing oh dear <laughs> he loves the mailman I used to have a lovely mail lady and she retired last year right I'm going to put a little dot of white into that snowflake too because I kind of like that just added just a little bit of light onto my piece and that is kind of like overcasting that bottle and I think to do anything other than I've kind of done might make it look just you know a, a little bit odd So I'm going to behave myself and stop there because I do like to get carried away. Right, now I'm going to put the phone tape on and I'll be right back. Right, so I have tidied up all my mess and this is the envelope. Try and get as much in as I can. And then this is the finished card now if you wanted to you can splash that with some watered down white paint or black paint and you know sort of lighten it up even more or you could do it in paler shades and use whatever colors you wanted to I mean those bottles could be amber and there could be a lot more red in there too but I was kind of just wanting to tie it in with my little bit of background there and that is what I have for you today. And this is, I am very, very sad to say, my last video for 2022. I am going away for a couple of weeks and I will be back. But I want to wish every single one of you a very, very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. I hope you stay safe and I hope you stay warm. And if there's anybody that is on their own, then just know that you can keep going through my videos. And if you leave messages, I will respond to them. So once again, I thank you so much for joining me. A very Merry Christmas. And as usual, all links below. Bye.